In the first part of this lesson, we'll introduce basic structural framing elements and show how to add them to Revit from Dynamo. Now the structural capabilities of Dynamo are still under development, so we'll keep this session brief. But say we need to address the lateral forces of the large opening in the building. The easiest way to do this is to add some beams to our open atrium. And this Revit file has two reference curves drawn along the span of the atrium. These can be found on the long sides of the atrium. We'll divide these curves to create the axes for our beam placement. So let's open up our library in Dynamo, and let's choose Select Model Element. I'll drop this onto the canvas. I'll close our library, and let's zoom into it. Let's copy and paste this once. We're going to reference one curve and then reference the second one. So let's hit select and choose the other curve. So we have two unique element IDs, each representing our curves. Let's maximize the Dynamo window, and I'm going to hit Control G to turn on our 3D preview. I'll hit Control G again. And first what we need to do before we can preview this is convert our model element into a Dynamo curve. By opening up our library, I'm going to close out and search for Curve Element. And let's choose this first option. By plugging our element into this, we are creating a Dynamo curve. Let's put Run Automatically on check for now so that we don't have to keep repeating this, and I'm going to hit Run to kickstart it. Let's hit Control G, and now we can see our curves in our Dynamo preview. I'm going to put it up in the top right here so that we can see it, but it's not blocking our graph. I'll hit Control G again to go back to node space. So here we have a curve referencing our model element, and now what we want to do is divide along these curves to create beams across the span. So the first thing we need to do this is find out the curve's length. I'm going to search for curve length. This first option is what we're looking for. I'll hit this, and I'll plug our curve into the input. And let's copy and paste and plug into the second. And these should be the same values because it's the same span. And now we want to find the spacing across this. And what we want to do with this is pull up an integer slider. And let's say we want a spacing every 6 meters. That way we'll get even spacing across the span. So what I want to do in this case is divide our curve evenly along our curve length. And let's find a node that will help us do this. I'll say I'm not sure what to search for here. I want a bunch of points along a curve divided by distance. There are actually a lot of options in Dynamo for this. We're going to navigate to Core. Sorry, let's get rid of Core. Let's go to Geometry and choose Curve. We're going to go to Actions. This way we're performing an action on our curve. Let's scroll all the way down here through these options and choose Point at Distance. If I drop this onto the canvas and plug our element curve into our curve input, you can see it's defaulting to zero. If I plug 6 into our distance, you can see we've bumped up to 6 meters from the start point. So now I want a spacing to be at 0, 6, 12, 18, and so on. I need to set up a range across this length to get that spacing. I'm going to search for range in Dynamo, and we don't want color range, we actually want number range. I'm going to choose that. Let's delete the extra click here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this integer slider. And we're going to start with a zero value. Let's say the end of this input is 54. And the step side is, is 6. So this gives us a list. 0, 6, 12, 18, 24, all the way up to 54. And this is the sequence we want. If I plug this into distance, we get all of our points along this curve. And let's minimize the output here. Now let me introduce you quickly to code block as kind of a shorthand way of creating this number range. I'm going to close out of the search bar and type in code block. 
This is a very powerful tool in Dynamo. Let's click that. And I'm going to type in 0 dot dot curve length dot dot curve spacing semicolon. So you can see it set up these inputs based on the variables I've defined. And if I plug curve length into our first input and the spacing into the second input, you can see we now have an array of 0, 6. It's defined the same way. This code block gets a lot more sophisticated. It's a shorthand way of creating the number range in this case, but we can perform a lot more operations, and we'll be doing some of that later in this course. I'll close out of the preview, and let's use code block for now. You can see that we'll have the same result as it's creating the same number range. I'll close out of number range. Let's move curve point at distance over a bit, and let's copy and paste it. I'll move that down, and I'll plug our second curve into our curve point. So now we've divided both of our curves, and we're ready to connect the points to create the axes for our beams. So now that we have our curves divided, they're still parametric. As I scrub this slider, you can see our division updating. Let's keep it at 6 for now because it divides nicely across the span. And now we want to draw a line between one point and another. So let's close our search bar and search for line. Let's scroll up and see what we have. This first option by start point and end point is what we want. I'll add that to the canvas, move it over, and let's plug in our start point and end point. So you can see we now have our lines defining our axes for the beams. Now we're essentially done here. We just have to add our structural framing elements to the Revit model. So let's cl close the search bar. Do structural. Structural framing types is what we want. So we'll choose that, and this is where we specify what type of structure we want. In this case, we only have one loaded into this project. And let's look for framing. Here we want structural framing, and we want to create structural framing. This option is by curve, level, up, vector, and type. It's a really long way of saying we're going to create beams from these axes. So let's walk through this. And let's see our first input, curve. These will be our lines. I'll hit Control G and move our preview up here so we can get a better look. Oops. Let's zoom out a bit. Hit Control G again. OK. So we're going to span across these two lines, which are at our roof level. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck Run Automatically. Now what we want is to plug these lines into our curve input. The level it's asking for will be the roof. We'll close our search bar and type in Level. So adding that to the canvas. And here's our option for roof. I'll plug that into Level. And now we want to look for an up vector, which may seem confusing for beams but most of the time our default is the z-axis. So let's search for z-axis. We want the z-axis option. This is just a standard Cartesian vector, and we'll plug that into up vector. And it's asking for structural type. I'll close the search and look for beam. Here we have beam. I'll drop that onto the canvas. And this is just a standard reference for a beam. And lastly, we're looking for a structural family symbol. That'll be our structure family type node. 
Now we should be ready to go. When I hit run, we should see these beams span across the atrium. So let's do it. And here we have our beams. If I minimize our library and scroll to the beginning of our graph, let's zoom out of these this preview here. And I'm going to change our span. Let's put it at 12. And remember, we disabled run automatically, so we won't see the auto update. Now let's hit run again. So now we're seeing the beam spacing change between Dynamo and Revit. So while this is a simple setup, by adding these beams to our Revit document, it's a good example of how the workflow can go from Dynamo to Revit. Here we have a number of objects living within Dynamo, and we're not really dealing with Revit until the end when we're adding the elements.